Are you a Java developer and you want to run jobs just once or recurrently? Then I have a great tool for you. It's called JobRunner. JobRunner makes it easy to run jobs, but hey, what's the difference between JobRunner and other solutions like, for example, a scheduled job in Spring Boot? Let's have a look at the documentation on jobrunner.io. Here you can see the architecture of JobRunner. So you see that uh, there is usually um, some application that is creating the job and the job then is stored in a storage system. Storage system means this could be a relational database or even a NoSQL store. And then you have one to end background job servers that will execute the job. But now let's have a look at some code. So let's create a project for a job runner. I'm using Spring Boot because I like Spring Boot and I'm using the Spring Initializer support here in IntelliJ. I call my project job runner. Uh, by the way, I use Maven. Uh, that's just me. You could also use Gradle. And then I use Java 21 uh, to get the newest features, but uh, this will also run with Java 17. Now let's head next. Uh, what we need to add is uh, we need to add web support that the application will stay running. Then we want to use a database. I prefer uh, Postgres. Um, now the question is how do you spin up the Postgres um, database during development? Um, Spring has decent support for that. You could use test containers or in my case, I just use Docker Compose. Uh, this will create a Docker Compose file that will run the database for me. Then um, to access the database, I need some uh, configuration. So let's uh, just add Spring uh, JDBC. Um, that's it. And uh, then we would add Job Runner, but we can't because Job Runner is not a starter here in that tool. So we just create a project. Now let's have a look at the POM file that is generated. We have Spring Boot Starter JDBC, as we told, Web to Docker Compose. We have here the Docker Compose file. As you can see, it uses Spring Boot uh, Postgres latest. And uh, now we just add the necessary dependency for Job Runner. It's a job run Spring Boot 3 starter, 6.3.4 is the latest version. Um, then we uh, hit reload, that uh, IntelliJ knows that we changed the POM file. And now what we have to do is we have to do some configuration in the application properties file. We will add um, two properties. We have here the org job runner background job server enabled. So this means uh, that here we will have the job server and the server that will start the jobs in the same instance. And the second one is we enable the dashboard. Now that's it. Let's try if this works. So I just run the job runner application. And now we can have a look at the log file. We have Docker Compose service because I already did that before. Uh, the Postgres database is already running. Uh, then we see here that uh, JobRunner is starting the dashboard. By the way, JobRunner also created the database uh, structure. And uh, now we have a dashboard here. It by default runs on port 8000. So let's access that and you see here uh, we have uh, the job runner dashboard. We see jobs, recurring jobs, servers, and we see some information about how many servers do we have, uh, what is uh, the memory consumption, and so on. So finally, everything works. Uh, the next step that we have to do is we have to create some jobs. So finally, we want to use job runner to execute the job for us. So how can we do that? We are using Spring Boot. That means there is a bean registered by the starter of Job Runner. It's the job scheduler. So you can just inject it here. I use a constructor injection. And then we could, for example, use uh, the post construct annotation to start a job. You could also use like a command line or an application runner. And here in this method, then we can use this scope 
scheduler. And this job scheduler, as you can see here, has a lot of methods that you can use. You can schedule something, you could schedule something recurrently, you can cut NQ, so fire and forget jobs, for example. What we want to do is we want to use schedule recurrently. So we want to start a job every five seconds, for example. So that way we can pass the duration. By the way, you can also use cron here, but cron is often a bit difficult to use if you want to have to build a cron expression. But also here, job run as you covered, just use the cron method from or the cron class from job runner and there will be some helper methods with uh, cron but here we want to use a uh, duration uh, of five seconds and yet now the interesting part of uh, job runner will be here we have to pass the job and with job runner you just pass a lambda expression like so and here we, for example, uh, say hello from job. And uh, what happened behind the scene is job runner will now store this job in the database. So job runner will use the information in the Lambda and will store the Lambda in the database and then schedule the job for us. So let's start it. And now you can see it starts the job. Now let's go to uh, the dashboard. And here we see uh, some graph. We also see here our recurring job. So um, here we see the hello world print line, what we have uh, written in the code. And then we see the crown expression. So we have every five seconds. So it was already translated from the duration to a crown expression. And here on the dashboard, uh, when we wait a bit, we will see um, the samples of our jobs. As you can see, they are all succeeded. So a green line means succeeded. And we can also have a look at the succeeded jobs. We're, here we have already a few because I already did that a few minutes ago. And here we see all the succeeded jobs. If we have failures in the job, we would see that uh, as well. And we can have a look at the job directly. Here we see what's been executed. So that what was stored by job runner in the database. And we see here the history um, of everything. So that's a very great feature of job runner, this dashboard, because you, if you use, for example, uh, scheduled from Spring Boot, you don't have any monitoring out of the box. But with job runner, you get this dashboard. And this dashboard can help you to uh, monitor all your running jobs. So this was a very brief introduction to Job Runner. There are many more features to discover. And also Job Runner can be integrated with other frameworks like, for example, Quarkus, or you can even use it without a framework. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel.